Welcome to the video on decoding CSIR Net Life Science Papers Analysis and Solution Techniques. Get ready to discover effective strategies and solution approaches tailored to empower aspiring candidates in conquering the challenging CSIR Net Life Science examination. Explore insightful analysis and techniques designed to aid you in navigating through CSIR Net Life Science paper with confidence and proficiency. Decoding CSIR Net Life Science paper require a comprehensive understanding of the exam pattern, syllabus, question pattern and solution techniques. The CSIR Net Life Science exam paper consists of multiple choice questions and the question paper is divided into three sections. Part A is about general aptitude. So, Part A consists of general aptitude based questions. Part B consists of fact based or memory based questions. And Part C consists of analytical and conceptual questions. Duration of examination is around 180 minutes or 3 hours. Then, syllabus of CSIA Net Life Science examination comprises of 13 units, where Unit 1 is about biochemistry. Unit 2 is about cell organization. Unit 3 is about fundamental processes. Unit 4 is cell communication and cell signaling. Unit 5 is developmental biology. Unit 6 is system physiology, plants. Unit 7 is animal physiology. Unit 8 is all about genetics, that is inheritance biology. Unit 9 is about diversity of life forms. Unit 10 is ecological principles. Unit 11 is Evolution and Behavior, Unit 12 is Applied Biology and Unit 13 is Methods in Biology. Going through the syllabus of the CSIR Net Life Science Examination will help you understand the breadth and depth of topics you need to cover from these units. Even analysis of previous year question paper is also essential to understand the distribution of topics, difficulty level and question types. While going through previous year question paper, make sure to do topic wise analysis, difficulty level analysis, weightage analysis and trend and question pattern analysis. For topic wise analysis, identify the frequently asked topics and focus more on them. Allocate your study time accordingly. For difficulty level analysis, Analyze the difficulty level of questions in each section. Prioritize studying the difficult topics and practice solving questions of varying difficulty level. So while practicing the questions, make sure to maintain a balance between easy, moderate and difficult questions. You need to practice all three type of questions. For weightage analysis, Determine the weightage of different topics based on the frequency of their appearance in previous papers. Devote more time to topics with higher weightage. So for details about the important topics, about the difficult, difficulty level of questions and about the weightage of different topics, we have already done live webinars, YouTube webinars and uh, YouTube videos in the past. So you can always go through them. You will find them in Biotechnica YouTube channel. Then even while going through previous year question paper, you have to look for any emerging trends in question paper or topic. So for trend and question pattern analysis, you have to look for any emerging trends in question patterns and topics and this will help you anticipate the direction in which the exam might be heading. So in this video today, I will be discussing, I will be showing you the different types of questions which can be asked in CSIR Net Life Science exam and also I will be sharing the tips and tricks on how to solve them. Now why is it important, like what is the benefit of knowing the type of questions asked in CSI and NET exam? Mainly the benefit of knowing the type of questions asked in the CSI and NET exam is that it helps to build your mental awareness and confidence. And also it helps in directed and channelized preparation. Because if you know the type of questions asked, you can prepare the topic accordingly from the respective units and 
your preparation will be focused so let me show you the first type of question which is asked in the exam is concept based questions so in the csi and net syllabus there are thousands of concept to be learned and understand so direct or indirect questions can be asked from any of those concepts so here you can see one such example of concept based question so in this question you have to identify the most appropriate cladogram that can be constructed using data matrix given below assuming zeros are plesiomorphic and ones are apomorphic characters so here in this question a data matrix table is given and a cladograms are given now definitely this question is based on concept of plesiomorphy and apomorphy so plesiomorphy which are primitive or ancestral character state whereas a derived character state is called as apomorphy so definitely to answer this question you should be familiar with what is plesiomorphic apomorphic and how to analyze this data matrix table now this is one only one example i have given you of concept based question different questions based on different concepts uh, from the units of csi and net life science exam is asked in the exam so question arises how to handle such questions how to solve such questions so read the question carefully and identify the underlying concept so be it any unit unit 5 or unit 8 or unit 2 or 3 you have to whatever top whatever question is given you have to read it carefully and identify that the question is asked on which concept now sometimes a question can be framed by combining concept from different units so you should always correlate them like for example cell division concept from unit 2 can be combined with the technique flow cytometry from unit 13 so you should know how we can use flow cytometer to analyze cell division so that concept you have to recall so read the question carefully recall the concept and then solve such questions so revision is the key to remember lots and lots of concepts from different units of csi and net life science examination at the time of exam to recall all those concepts it's very much needed that during the exam preparation you revise these concepts frequently so that you are able to recall them at the time of examination the another type of questions asked are arranging or ordering questions in such type of questions you need to rearrange the options or put them in sequence like in increasing order or decreasing order or maybe like any technique is given so you have to write down and let's say technique steps are given process steps are given and you have to rearrange them in the correct order So here is one such example so this question is from unit 6 that in photosynthetic electron transport electrons travel through carriers organized in the z scheme the following are indicated as directions of electron flow so four uh, sequences are given so you have to find out that which of the following combinations is correct so what are the points to keep in mind while solving such type of questions first of all read the question carefully and then recall that this question is based on which concept so like this question is about the electron transport electron travels through carriers organized in z scheme so without looking at the option recall the sequence so recall and write down the sequence and once you write down then look for the option or the sequence which matches with the sequence you have written So look at these one, two, three, and four points given in the question, and uh, look for that whatever sequence you have written. Will, so that should that is your correct sequence. So it matches with which of the points given in the question. But be careful of the order. Make sure what is asked in the question. Maybe there are some questions where you have to arrange the sequences, like they mention. increasing or decreasing right and if you directly look at the options or the sequences which are given in the question it might can confuse you so the best approach is recall the sequence write it down and 
write the arrange sequence on paper and then finally match it with the correct option. The third type of questions asked in CSI and net license examination is numerical type of formula based questions. Such type of questions are very scoring as the answer can be found by applying the direct formulas. So here on your screen you can see two types of questions numerical type and formula based questions. So question one is about the segment of BDNA. It encodes an enzyme of molecular mass 50 kilo deltan and you have to estimate the length of segment in micrometers. On the other hand, the second question is about the Hardy-Winberg equilibrium. So red here is a recessive trait in humans and in a randomly mating population in, in Hardy-Winberg equilibrium, approximately 9% of individuals are red here. We have to calculate the frequency of heterozygotes. Now question arises how to handle such questions. So first of all, I'll suggest that solve such questions in beginning. Because these type of questions are very scoring, you can get them in part B or part C of CSI and Net Life Science Examination. And especially when you're like in the beginning, when your mind is fresh, it's better that you solve such questions as you can uh, pay attention more on the calculation part. So read the question and identify the concept on which the question is based. Like here, this question is based on Hardy-Winberg equilibrium. Then there could be a question on genetic mapping, a calculation of recombination frequency or Lord score. The question can be on Beer-Lambert's law. So identify the concept on which the question is based and then write down or just pay attention to what information is given in the question. Like here in this question, the molecular mass of an enzyme is 50 kilo deltan. And here in second question, 9% of individuals are red haired. Right? So you have to focus on the information given in the question. And then you have to recall and apply the appropriate formula. So substitute the values in formula and Make sure to convert the units properly. Like if unit conversion is needed, be careful, be very careful about the unit conversions. Like here in this question, it is mentioned that the length of the segment uh, we have to calculate in micrometers. Similarly, instead of mentioning it in the question, sim simply in the options they mention that uh, the answer should be like in millimolar or molar, right? So you have to be very much careful about the unit conversions. and be patient and calm while calculating because sometimes we know the formula, we understand the question, we know which concept it is based on, we recall the formula, we put the values, but we do the mistakes while calculating. So be patient and calm while calculating, do calculations properly and convert the answers into required unit or form. So remember, even if you know the correct answer, things might go wrong because you are under tremendous pressure in the exam and mistakes are bound to happen under pressure. So read and answer such questions very carefully. Do not misread anything. Then a very popular type of questions asked in CSI and Net Life Science exam is match the following type questions. These type of questions again are very scoring. So a table is given to you, a call it com which comprises of two or three columns. So in one column, like here in this question, the coenzymes is mentioned and the transient carriers of specific atoms or functional groups are mentioned in column two. So coenzymes serving as transient carriers of specific atoms or functional groups are mentioned in column two. And you have to find the correct combination. So basically the type of questions which are asked under this category are like gene or protein or enzyme is given and they may ask about the function of the gene or composition or cofactor of the protein or enzyme. Then similarly either any growth factor, hormone, inhibitor or antibiotic may be given in one column and their effect is mentioned in another column and you have to choose the correct combination. Then uh, like from unit 9, organisms can be given and their properties, characteristics or phylogeny. So you have to find the correct match. Then from unit 4 or unit 7, diseases are given and the causative agents. So diseases in one column and causative agents in another column is given and you have to find the correct match. 
and uh, now if you see the current trend is that even now in csi net life science examination the questions are asked where match the following type questions are asked where the scientist name is given in one column and the discoveries of the scientist are given in another column and you have to choose the correct combination so th usually these type of questions are very scoring so just remember few tricks here few tips i want to give you for uh, solving such type of questions try to match the easiest one which you know like four options are given right like four uh, four enzymes are given here coenzymes are given here right so try to match the easiest one that you already know look for so four enzymes are given here so let's say so four enzymes are given here so try to match the one which you already know about for example let's say coenzyme a i'm familiar with coenzyme a i'm familiar with so i know that coenzyme a it is the carrier of the acyl groups so i know a is 4 and when i say a is 4 that means i have to look for where a is 4 given in the option so it is only given in option 1 and hence it is the answer but for safer side always check for like you can look for one more coenzyme in such question so do you don't have to look at the entire table together pick one point at a time and match against available options so start with them with the easiest one that you are already that you already uh, familiar with or know about and then to confirm like sometimes what happens like here this question is uh, easy like only a4 is given in option 1 but what if a4 is given in option 4 also so in that case you, you know that okay answer cannot be 2 and 3 you can omit these two options out of 4 but now to confirm the answer now to find out the answer whether it is 1 or 4 you have to look for one more term so for example if i take pyridoxal phosphate so it's a carrier of amino groups so c2 is given in option 1 so i can say that's for the confirms my answer so be careful in selecting the correct option because i told you if the if like in option 4 also a4 is mentioned then the, this question could be quite confusing then experimental result analysis or technique application questions so in this type the csir may give you a certain experiments and ask for the interpretation of that experiment in a true or false format and even like a technique is given for example a patch clamp technique is given or maybe a question can be framed by combining the techniques different techniques like here in this question so they may ask you about the application the question may be about the application of the techniques so here in this question it is mentioned that based upon phenotypic observation it was concluded that an unknown gene responsible for an agronomically important trait is present in particular plant in order to identify the genes a researcher proposes to use the following strategy pcr amplification map based cloning subtractive dna hybridization genomic sequencing and develop molecular markers linked to trait you have to find out which of the following option is most suitable for identifying the unknown gene so definitely to answer such question you need to be familiar with the principle and application of each and every technique you should know why do we use pcr what, when map based cloning can be used uh, what is the what is subtractive dna hybridization or genome sequencing right and what are molecular markers so always remember there are certain points to remember while solving these type of questions recall the concept behind the question topic so you have to recall that okay this like the application of pcr or map based cloning what is map based cloning what is subtractive dna hybridization right if a question is about any experimental question is given and it is about any uh, process or let's say from unit 13 you get questions on restriction digestion so make so based on information given in the question draw mental image or a rough diagram like if it is mentioned that there is a gene of 1.5 kb and recognition site two recognition site of bamh1 is given so draw a mental image or rough diagram of it and if it is asked that if a partial digestion is performed then how many restriction digestion fragments you will get so for this you have to draw a diagram even if any pathway is given then you have to draw flow chart or let's say any technique process is given then you have to write down the steps performed right 
and also you should be should have a clear picture of what a technique can do or cannot do like you should know that what a subtractive dna hybridization can do or genomic sequence can do or cannot do so these are certain points to remember while solving the experimental result analysis or technique application questions then questions involving graph now these type of questions are again very much common in csi and net life science exam so csir may convert any concept into graphical format and questions can be asked from it so how to handle such questions so here you can see the, this is a question a protein x is kept in an inactive state in cytosol as complete complexed with protein y under certain stress stimuli y gets phosphorylated resulting in proteasomal degradation x becomes free translocate to nucleus and results into transcription of a gene which causes cell death by apoptosis and then stress stimuli were given to following four different cases so four cases are given and you have to find out that which one of the following graphs best describe the apoptotic state of cells in the above cases so here y axis represent percent apoptotic cells so to answer such questions you need to be familiar with this concept of apoptosis and also the conditions which results into apoptosis and the biggest advantage of solving these graph based questions is that you just have to focus on the information given in the question so you have to read the question carefully and then you have to based on information given you have to read the graph or let's say any figure which is given so you have to read the graph as well you don't have to think out of the box based on information given in the question you have to answer such question so you should learn to make the correlation between the text and the graph and link the question with the underlying mechanism so these are the points that you have to keep in mind while solving the graph based questions the next type of question asked is based on pathways so in csir net life science exam you will find questions comes from different pathways mentioned in the syllabus like signal transduction pathway uh, you may get a question on crab cycle right and even like uh, several pathways are given in other units also like in unit 4 right we have uh, cell signaling pathways are there but it is seen that csir net loves to ask questions related to hypothetical pathways as well to judge your concepts and analytical skills so how to handle such questions read the question carefully read the pathway which is given and understand it so this question is from inheritance biology a hypothetical pathway is given and you have to find out that which of the following crosses can lead to the observations mentioned in the question so definitely you have to read the pathway read the question carefully pay attention to information given in the question understand it and then again here you have to correlate the text and pathway like you have to maintain a you have to make a correlation between text and pathway given and then you have to link the question with the underlying mechanism so again here you don't have to think out of the box whatever information is given in the question whatever pathway is given on the in the question based on that you have to choose the correct option then we have correct or incorrect type of questions so as the name suggests questions can come where out of four options you need to answer which is correct or which is incorrect now i have come across the queries of uh, several csi net aspirants where they mention that ma'am we know the concept we know how to solve the question but still we are not getting the correct answer the reason being that they don't focus on or pay attention to the terms given incorrect option is asked but they are in so hurry in solving the question that they choose they just mark the correct they just mark the correct option whereas incorrect the statement which is incorrect or option which is incorrect is asked in the exam so these type of questions you get in part b as well as in part c if such a question comes in part c it will be framed like selecting from uh, like different groups of true or false statement as per the question 
So these type of questions are becoming more common in CSI and NET exam. So question arises how to handle such questions. So again, you have to read the question carefully and you have to make sure what is asked in the exam. Make sure what is asked in the exam. Is it a correct statement or instead of correct, they can mention true or not true, right? Or false. So that you have to be sure what is being asked in the exam. Sometimes uh, in the exam, there are several questions asked where they mention that choose a statement, choose the statement in which two are true and one is incorrect or true are correct and one is incorrect. Right? So for this, you have to read all the options carefully and you have to find and decide the most appropriate answer. And the best way is that you eliminate the inappropriate options. Like if the incorrect statement is asked, so go for like which statements are true. So here in this case, like first, because second is the answer. So first, third and fourth must be the true statement. So whichever statement you are sure with, start with that and eliminate the inappropriate options, which are true statements in this case. Lastly, I would like to give you certain tips that whatever type of questions I have shown, I have shown you in this video to answer the questions, conceptual clarity is needed. So ensure that a strong understanding, ensure that you have a strong understanding of fundamental concept in each topic. Remember CSI and NET questions often test the depth of your understanding rather than root memorization. So, while preparing for CSI and NET life science examination, focus on understanding and not on root memorization. Then, regular practice is also very much important. Regular practice of questions. This is needed to familiarize yourself with the exam format and improve your problem solving skills. Then time management. Time management during the CSIR net exam preparation is crucial. Not only at the time of examination, but even during the CSIR net life science exam preparation, time management is crucial. So when you are practicing questions, Make sure that you practice solving questions under timed conditions. Keep a clock or a timer to improve your speed and efficiency. And also allocate time to each section based on the weightage. So like part C questions, each question carries four marks. So you can allocate maximum time for solving part C. Because part C questions are again like they are lengthy and they require analytical skills. So like you can devote 1.5 hours out of uh, 3 hours to part C. Part B you can devote 1 hour and part A you can devote 20 minutes. And remaining time you can utilize for going through the paper thoroughly. Then elimination method. Use the process of elimination to rule out incorrect options and increase your chances of selecting the correct answer, especially when unsure. Then develop a systematic revision strategy to revisit important topics periodically. I have told you earlier also in this video, regular revision is must. So revisit important topics periodically and reinforce your learning. Then Take mock tests regularly to stimulate exam conditions and access your preparation level. Analyze your performance to identify the strengths and weaknesses. So work on your weaknesses if any. And keep yourself updated with latest developments in field of life sciences. So by following these analysis and tips and tricks, you can effectively decode CSI and Net Life Science papers and enhance your chances of success in the exam. Thank you.